In this video, we will do some road load calculations using Microsoft Excel. So, I'll start the Microsoft Excel now. Yeah. So, in this Excel, I have already populated a few cells of, with the assumptions which we have made. So, uh, these are the values here. And then, uh, these are the columns which we have created. So, the first is velocity in kilometer per hour. Now, we will convert that into velocity in meter per second. Then we will find the acceleration and we will calculate for these road loads. And at last, we will sum all of them to find the tractive force. So the velocity which will this will start from zero and in with increment of one. So zero to hundred kilometers per hour. I will quickly just drag that into here. Then uh, we have to convert this velocity, which is in kilometer per hour to meter per second. So this is very simple. I'll start uh, with typing in is equal to. Then we will select the cell which are uh, the adjacent cell which we need to convert. Then we will multiply 5 divided by 80. Now this gives us the velocity in meters per second. And then we will go and check it. Yeah. So this is it. Now for the acceleration part, since the acceleration is constant, you can directly use the 2.7778 here so this this acceleration is constant throughout and then we will start with the road loads calculation again we will start with is equal to we will type 0 0.5 multiply and I will select the air density then I will select the coefficient of drag then I will select the area then I will select the velocity which is in meter per second now I have to uh, square this so I will add the symbol and I just added two. This will give me the aerodynamic drag force at different velocities. Similarly, and now we will go, we will calculate the rolling resistance force again is equal to now multiply that into mass. Now multiply that into acceleration due to gravity. Now multiply. Now we will use cos. And uh, here we have uh, before before uh, adding the value for cos, we have to do one thing. The Microsoft Excel uh, by default uses radians instead of degrees. So we have to convert this value, this uh, five degree into radians. So for that, what we have to do is we will select. Uh, the, the cell which has 5 degree in it then we will multiply it by pi now the excel has a pi function here we will close that and now we have to divide the whole thing by 180 this gives us the value in radians I will highlight this cell for our picture difference and I will type it this is in radians So we don't have to uh, use that pi divided by 180 part in the equation here. So this makes a little this thing a little simple. So again, we'll start with the is equal to. Then we'll choose the total mass. Multiply this by acceleration due to gravity. Multiply this by cos and this number. And then we will multiply this into the rolling resistance coefficient. Then we will multiply this. We'll add this equation 1 plus square brackets. Now this is the velocity. We will select the velocity here. Plus 3.6 divided by 160. Now closing brackets. This will give us the rolling resistance at zero velocity. Again, we will double click here. So this extends to the bottom of the table. Now we will calculate gradient resistance force. This is again simple. We will select total mass. Multiply this by gravity, acceleration due to gravity. Multiply this by sine. And now here again, since we have, I have already calculated, converted the degree into radians, I don't have to do anything else. I will just select this. This is, this is uh, the gradient is uh, 
it's not changing so the value will be same also for the acceleration part we will add select the total mass here and then the acceleration sorry I select the total mass multiply this by the acceleration and this should give me the values here yeah. now we will add this so we will select the first cell then add and like this we will, we will have the summation of equations now we can make this bold so we can see the part okay so this is how you will calculate the roll loads in uh, microsoft excel and the microsoft excel gives us a uh, very good flexibility to ca do these calculations very rapidly so you don't have to do it individually you can grow from here and uh, in the ppt also this table i have uh, populated using this excel only so we will highlight few points to see at 0 kmph then at 25 kmph then at 50 kmph then at 75 kmph and then at 100 kmph so even you can plot this comparison excel also or the, the comparison charts sorry so for that we have to select the parameters we will select the velocity here and I'll press shift so I can select uh, another column oh, sorry you have to press control to select different values in excel then we'll insert a uh, We'll insert a line chart. Here you can see the trend how the acceleration is increasing. Similarly, we can uh, consider rolling resistance into it also. Yeah. We'll insert a line chart, 2D line chart. Okay, we don't need that third series, so we will delete it. Yeah, here yeah, you can see how hmm. we will just take this chart. Here. Now you can see again, see the same trend, but uh, 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 here you can see how the rolling resistance is increasing with respect to speed uh, or the velocity, and the aerodynamic drag how it is increasing with respect to speed. Now, in the next videos, we will uh, do the wheel torque and field speed and the power required calculations thank you